I've got it. Has returned. Have I gotten out of line? Have you come to punish me? Am I a bad girl? Or do you just want to use my power? Do you remember me, Fatebinder? Now don't disappoint me. We worked together at the Vellum Citadel. You used my voice to subdue those naughty sages who tried to escape. 
not that I mind them trying to protect me, even if they don't really mean it. I suppose you're here to tell me I can't gather another flock. If some people want to worship me, is that really such a bad thing? Is Cairo so insecure to worry about a little competition? Look at me! Do you think I seem dangerous? What harm can a 15-year-old girl cause? I'm I'd say it's annoying, but don't you think it's kind of flattering to have everyone wanting me so desperately? Kairos, the voices of Nurat, Tunan, you? Things never change, do they? The faces are different, but the words keep repeating. No one gives a claw about me. I don't know why you would be any different. You will do no such thing. Remove my helmet. Really? Nothing at all? What a disappointment. Not to mention a colossal waste of effort on my part. I hoped you would assist me in a delicate matter, but it appears you're no use to me at all. Keeping up the act can be a bit tiring at times. I've been the songbird for so long, I've forgotten how to be anything else. So now I need a babysitter? It was Tunan, wasn't it? Or Narat? <sighs> Monsters, both of them. Everyone seems to think I'm gonna go out of control again and kill a whole village. I'm 15. I think I know what I'm doing. Although... You did activate one of the spires, so your power is something I could learn from, and you are right. I'm certainly not going to make any significant advances staying here with a bunch of nobodies worshipping me. Watching you in action could give me the edge I need to unlock a spire of my own. Well then, let's go! Goodbye to you too. Second Spire has awoken to your presence. This is fascinating, and I admit enviable. I've been mulling over that structure we found atop Vendrian's well. Would you be opposed to me studying the sculpture in closer detail? I'd perhaps work a spell or two near the structure. Simple cantrips of grave light by which to read and inspect, but I will not poke or shove the thing in any way physical or mystical. Thank you. Next time we have a good moonlit night, I best settle in and see what sort of magic perturbations I can sense from the sculpture. What is it you need? Well, we're working with the disfavored. You want my advice? My advice would be to get close to Graven Ash and plunge a poison shiv in his ear. Well, if you're working with Graven Ash, I'm not saying it's a quick plan, but I think if you ask away. We've all heard legends of child archons, but Siren is the real thing. She is so very jaded for her age. But I'd be a sour ninny shitter too if I had a contraption stuck on my head limiting my greatness. I'll tell you this much. Her hatred of the voices of Narad is either genuine or a most fantastic act. But being a giant liar, I know another liar when I see one. And I'd wager this gripe is sincere. Ask away. Good day, Fate Binder. What do you need? Are we trading in gossip now, Fatebinder? Or are you collecting information to use against us? What do you want to know about? <laughs> the walking ring pile? Let's hope you never have to go anywhere unnoticed. I mean, what kind of idiot do you have to be if you can't even take off your armor? Maybe he's pretty, but wrapped in that getup, who can tell? What was that you said? I couldn't quite hear you. It's okay, Barak. I didn't say anything about anyone important. I'll admit he can handle himself in a fight, but she's got some power in there, that's for sure. And as long as I'm crippled, I will begrudgingly, mind you, admit she could probably win if we were pitted against each other. Although I'm more than happy to give her a try. I'm sorry, sweetie. I'm confused. Are you offering me a duel or something a little more down and dirty? You know what I meant! Oh, don't worry, dear. You're far too young for me. I like someone with a little wear and tear on them. And not just up here. Though, I, I suppose I should watch myself around her. You never know how people will react to a challenge. I'm jealous of him. 
I've heard so much about the Vellum Citadel, and he actually got to see it before all the unpleasantness. Although not all sages are necessarily worthy of praise. That bitch? I'd walk her off the spire if I knew I could get away with it. I don't know why you even waste your time with her. She's rude, violent, base, impatient, and entirely pointless. What do you need?
What do you need?
What do you need? What do you need? Can't do that. Can't do that. Sorry.
slow and steady. Sorry, I can't. So, your latest acquisition has me thinking about the Spire some more. By all accounts, they go as far back as the old walls. Over the centuries, the nobles of the Tears have claimed the Spires, but they've only ever battled over the land at the ground level of the monuments. I've never seen the glyphs of a Spire light up in all my ears. Not until you show up. If this were an isolated incident, I'd be confused. But it seems the spires, plural, are somehow connected to you. If I had the words for it, I'd share. Of course, how can I help? Are you asking for an objectivist? He is a proper Northman with duty in his blood, which makes me suspect his loyalty to Ash is stronger than his loyalty to you. I must admit, I am completely fascinated by his predicament. I know little of swordplay and couldn't work a curve and arrow to save my life. <laughs> I, I, I can't really comment on the lady. Lady? <laughs> You're just afraid to talk in front of me clear as day. Uh, uh, no, not at all. Uh... Spare me your blather. Huh. Think that, do you? Didn't know you had such swollen hope for me. A most fascinating specimen. I think she has great potential. A dangerous amount of potential, to be blunt. We should consider ourselves lucky to have her on our side. Good Tidecasters stay underwater. Kairos did the tears a favor by erasing those moon howlers from history. A shame one of them escaped justice. I like that I make you this agitated. Considering all the things that don't seem to bother you in the slightest, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of getting off on how much power you're giving me here. Oh. And then there's your coquettish act whenever someone calls you on your teeth. I'll be the one ready to tangle when, not if, you decide to pounce. As a chronicler of history, I am most honored to have the chance to travel alongside a luminary. This supports my hypothesis that her power manifests by the actual sound of her voice, and less of the particulars the words chosen. Fascinating. So, if I'm hearing you right, you're saying my words have no weight or significance, and it's simply my magic that makes me powerful. I've got a song for you, Lantry. Do you want to hear it? What? It's high praise. I am nothing if not a semi-reliable font. I know everything, except... I am nothing if... I know... I'm flattered you think me that wise, but... Unless you are enthralled by migration observations and titillated by triangle ratios, I, I think I'd bore you silly. Fine, fine. If you have truly nothing better... <clears throat> a Brief History of the Tears by Sage Landry. Volume 1, Settlers from the East. Volume 3, years 90 to 94. Well, if you enjoyed that, you're going to love Ratios of the Sun. So, by using the shadow of a staff at noon as a starting point, I use triangles to show a relation. Ah, I knew someone would ask that. <laughs> and yes, so here's my proof. Sage winding script shows a relationship between all half-square triangles. Uh, um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Way to uh, steal the concluding reveal from me. <laughs> but yeah, that's about the gist of it. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me, <clears throat> I think my voice needs rest.
Can't do it. At that. least in theory. If given the So, I must ask, are you planning on taking sides in the Civil War? Or do you have other plans? Dutifully spoken. It is Tunon's duty to arbitrate matters between the Archons, so this rift between Ash and Narat certainly falls under his jurisdiction. Whatever you do next, consider that many eyes will be upon you, for you have both delivered and taken away the Overlord's edicts, and few will know how to make sense of the latter. You are an exception the Archons cannot afford to ignore. Most of Kairos's edicts were either worded to end in a manner of the Overlord's choosing, or the edicts have simply continued in perpetuity. The oldest is, I think, Goldbraith and the Edict of Sorrows, and that tale dates back to around the year 110. In all these stories, Kairos's edict very clearly gives its victim a single way to escape, and someone manages it. What's never happened is the pure abatement of an edict like using a spell of warding or cancellation. Uh, uh, one moment, my friend. Just let me finish this thought. I am nothing if not a semi-reliable font of... I am nothing if not a semi-reliable font of knowledge. Oh, I know everything. Oh, I think I've managed to... I know everything. My knowledge is largely... The earliest settlers made note of the beastmen, so they were here before us, but not before the older realms. By all accounts, the tribes do not have record of a time before the old walls. There have been thousands of tribes throughout history. Most dissolve within a choirman's lifespan. The stronger females branch off and make their own tribes with tougher names. Then the King of Azure rounds you up and puts you to work. The Stone Stalkers are the most powerful of remaining tribes, thriving now that Azure has fallen. As for the rest, the old talons of Frozen Cloud, the Troll Hooks, the Kolokar, the Katvanas, the Jaw Snap, all gone, I think. They are true to their names and live like beasts. Clothing and artifice seem to have little value to them, whereas rutting and killing are the reason they wake in the morning. But. It would be a mistake to think them stupid. Ask any tamer and they'll tell you some stories of their cunning. 
You'd want to ask the authority, Sage Quillborn. She lived with the Kolokar for a few span, back in 404. She noted that beastmen show fluid loyalty to new matrons. They adapt well to changing leaders, but they never change the relatively simple but strict hierarchical model. Few beastmen have accepted fealty to Kairos. It would seem the notion of bowing to a person you have not seen in the flesh is insanity. This inability to bow to the Overlord will no doubt doom the species. I know everything. I am nothing if not a... And I'd be happy to oblige. Edicts are the strongest manifestation of magic we know, and they seem to violate all other lesser phenomena. Now, what I find curious, edicts can flex a little. Or so my study suggests this is the case. Take the Edict of Storms. While the day it was proclaimed was the most violent, the actual radius of the storm has changed over time. So, in my studies, some edicts resolve some problem of the overlords and then vanish into history. But the edicts that linger around, almost all of them begin to widen their... Here's the intriguing part. The older the edict, and the more that's written about it, the more the reports of that edict get more dire over time. Never. The only time history knows of edicts ending is when someone answers the commandments put forth in the original proclamation. I contend that edicts are powered by fear. Fear of Kairos helps fuel the casting, and fear of the edict feeds the magic, sustaining it, and if enough people fear it, even growing it a bit. I thought just that, but wherever an edict is cast or has been cast, the land will always hum with a little background noise. Intellectual honesty demands that I study the matter more. If I'm correct, the more people fear and obsess over an edict, the stronger it becomes. And I'd be happy to oblige. Ever and I'd be happy to oblige. Familiar is a relative term. I think I know more than most, but it's a subject of mystery, even to the scholars. Though.
and I'd be happy.